Hello and welcome to week 21 of a 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. And if this is your first time, thanks for tuning in. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to cover a hidden gem. Actually make that uncover a hidden gem in IS 7 and 7.5. Have you ever wanted to have more visibility into what's currently running in IIS, for example, how long pages have been running, which ones are taking the most CPU, and where the long running queries are. And if you've troubleshooted back in the IIS 6 or prior days, it was really a black box. It's really difficult to tell what's running on the box at a given, any given time. Well, that's now changed. In IIS 7, there's a new technology introduced called RESCA. RSCA stands for Runtime Status Control API. Let me explain further what it is. RESCA lets you see current running information in IIS. So not just static config, not information that doesn't change, but what's happening in real time on the server. And one of what I believe is the most useful tools is kind of hidden because it's a couple steps deep without an obvious way to find it. So unless you've been poking around in IIS before, you may not have seen this before. So I hope to introduce a few people to this and the power behind it. So let's dig in. So first, to find this runtime information, we start here at the global level. And it's right here be behind this worker processes icon. So we click on worker processes. And we can see here contoso.com. This is the current app pool that's running. We can see the process ID. We can see private and virtual bytes. And so this in itself is RESCA information. It's what's happening right at this moment. Because you'll notice I actually have a lot more app pools. So it's only showing the one that's currently running at the moment. And if I had more sites running or more app pools running, there would be a lot more, obviously. Now, here's where it gets fun. So you may not notice from this screen, but there's actually a lot more information hidden behind here. And you have to actually click on it. And now you see the view current requests. And you can also double click on it. So here's where the real fun comes in. So let's imagine a situation here where we have high CPU on the server. Now, this isn't on the test machine. We'll imagine high CPU and complaints from users of some issues here. So what I want to do is let's actually view the current request right at this moment. And OK, so here's where we have the information available to us. And this was not available at all in IS 6, but now it's completely available here to us in IS 7. A great troubleshooting tool. So a few things that are worth noting here. Uh, one is the website ID. And so this, you know, if you click on the sites, it would correspond to a particular site. In this case, it's contosa.com. And the URL. And notice it has not just the page, but it also has a query string. So in this case, we see the category equals clothing or hats or footwear. And so we're starting to see a trend here. Look at the ones that are taking the longest to run. And actually, I should show you first here is the time elapsed is the last column. So we can see some here are taking 20, look at this, 16 to 26 seconds for these pages to run. And that's just our catalog. That should only take two or three or four seconds at most and better in most cases. So we have something wrong here, and the trend is starting to emerge. So we realize it's probably our catalog page that's to blame here. And some other information available is the verb. In this case, it's get, but we could also have a post, or I guess potentially a head request could be here as well. And the client IP. And in this case, I'm just testing from one location, but you can imagine this would be client IPs from all over the world. And also, it's possible to see within, especially with managed code, you can see where it is. For example, is it at the authenticate request, or is it deeper down within the managed pipeline? So this information here is great for troubleshooting. Let me just give you an example. Uh, two situations in the last few months, or couple months actually, I've troubleshooted where I saw this elapsed time anywhere up to well, five minutes for a number of pages here. And these ones here were all from particular pages. And one of them turned out to be a com interrupt issue with classic ASP, it was calling out to com plus and it was queuing in there, get everything getting stuck behind one piece. So you could see there was one real slow page. And in that situation, there was one page here at the very top and then a whole bunch of other types of pages. No pattern, except that when we ran this after a few different situations, the top one was always the same page. So we knew which one to blame. It was causing everything else to bottle behind it. And in another situation, we had pages running for multiple minutes as well. And it had a pattern of the same type of file over and over again up at the top. So you can see the usefulness here of being able to see the current runtime information. Now, notice it doesn't have the CPU. It'd be great if it did. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't. But you can tell that the ones that are running long are probably suspect. They're the ones that you probably want to blame first. Now, before I show the same in app command, one thing worth noting is don't forget this is runtime. It changes. So if I go to the worker processes, and if that app pool had recycled, right now that's a PID of 2000, then this could be different. And it may not always show. Also, if you're within the request section itself, you can hit the F5 key at any point to refresh. And so I'm just hitting F5 here, and it's refreshing. You're getting, you can see the ones that are lasting the longest here. And it is also possible to filter by anything running longer than one second, for example. And so it only show things running longer than one second. And that will get rid of the noise if you have a whole bunch of really fast running pages that fill this up on a busy production server. OK, well, this is great. It's available here in the UI. But what about app command? App command is actually very useful in that it allows you to dig in and have it in a text format. So you can drop it into Excel or Notepad. And so let's take a look. First, you want to navigate, if you don't already have App Command in your path, navigate to Windows System 32, iNet Serve, and I'll cover it more App Command in another week. But let's do an App Command slash question mark. And we have some information up here at the top. The RESCA, that's the current runtime information, we have is our app. And we have our app pool. And the WP, which is our worker process, and the request. Those four are current information going on right at the moment. The other information is static config information. So let's dig further, and we'll do request slash question mark. And we have just a single command, which is list. So let's go back here, and we'll do list and, and run this. And you can see the information here. It's a little bit noisy to look through. But the exact same information is here available in app command. And so we can see the request, and there's a unique ID. And we can see the URL. You can see the time it's taken, the client IP, and where it exists. And also, well, yeah, here I mentioned that already, but the time taken. So this one now we can see the longest running one is 20 seconds. Again, the pattern is emerging. Something is wrong with our catalog.aspx page. So then we need to start digging into that and see if we can find out what this issue is. Also, sometimes there's a trend in the query string. For example, a particular GUID or a particular query string. And again, this will really help the developers know who worked on this page. Now, this, as I mentioned here, look at it, it's kind of messy. So what you can also do is, and I mentioned this, I believe, with a third week, is just this pipe it out to the clip command. And then just paste it here. And now you have all the information available right here within Notepad. And you could also send this to Excel. And so you can see this is a lot easier to view, just in each in its own line there. And the exact same information is available for you. And so now back here in app command, let's look at this a bit further. App command list request slash question mark. And notice you have a lot of other information available here as well, a lot of other options. And so you have, for example, you can do by based on the request name or the site name. And another good one is the elapsed. So let's actually try this out. And so if we do slash site name contosa.com and elapsed, and then it's mentioned in the help that's in milliseconds. And so let's do just anything greater than five. And notice it got rid of a lot of the noise. Let's do it again to the clipboard. And we drop that in here. And so we only have things that have lasted longer than the five seconds here. Cleans it up a lot in to be able to organize and siphon out what you want. And again, filtered by the site on a busy server, this is great as well. So then you don't have to worry about it showing off all the other servers that you're not interested in. And you can narrow right down to the app pool, the website, and the actual working worker process, the PID of the worker process. So there you go. I hope you see the usefulness here of this hidden gem, the active running request right now at this moment great for troubleshooting. I've used it many times to troubleshoot difficult situations, and I hope you find it useful and that you can use it yourself as well. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to see you again next week.